Nick, that's Steve, that's George. We're watching VHS tapes. We have an office with 11,000 of them. I'm not there right now. I'm in the most basement -y basement of all time. Look at this. There's like a, a bow flex that's never used. There's a Pink Floyd poster. There's board games that are collecting dust. Uh, I'm in Wisconsin at Jakester's uh, basement. So, um, yeah. Hi. How it's are you guys? A, always a treat when you're at Jakester's basement. It's yeah. kind of a fun surprise for everybody. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, find any tapes while you were in Wisconsin? I haven't. No, I haven't gone thrifting at all. Yeah. You find anything? I got a few to sh yeah, well, I was just going to show off a few uh, a few new things uh, uh, for our Saturday morning cartoon series. I went to the office and grabbed these. Um, this first one is, uh, this is uh, the Chipmunks Easter, which we're going to be watching this Saturday with Jason Griffith, who played um, Sonic the Hedgehog in the Sonic cartoon. We figured he's got some rodent experience. Yeah. Right, I guess that's why we chose to watch. Sure, that, that makes sense. It makes as much sense as anything else does on the show. But here are some other uh, potentials for you know Saturday episodes because we get Laser Tag Academy. Have you seen this one, George? Seems like something you might have watched. I, I haven't, but I, I'm I'm excited to see how they turned uh, a bunch of guns and hats into a cartoon. <laughs> Joe, you and your brothers had Laser Tag, right? Yep. Yep, we we did pretty well for ourselves. We were doing pretty oh, well. Yeah. We, say. we had yeah. uh, laser tag technology in our household. Was that Michael Jackson on the cover too? It kind of looked Michael Jackson. -y. No, that's a lady. Oh. But um, yeah, it's Michael Jackson. It looks even uh, more there. Michael Jackson on the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had Mad Balls growing up, and we have Mad Balls. Gross jokes. This is a Mad Balls cartoon. We've done Garbage Fail Kids. We haven't done Mad Balls, so that might be another one to do. I had Mad Balls too. Uh, yeah, the Pickett family, we were doing pretty well toys-wise. Nothing else-wise, but toys-wise. We oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, we've watched uh, Hammer Man, but Kid and Play had their own cartoon, too. So I was thinking maybe we have Roy Miles back, who the rap video director um, and puppeteer. We watched Kid and Play. So some future maybe VHS uh, cartoons we could watch in the future. I'm stoked. Totally stoked. Yeah. Uh, let's get into a Found Footage Festival classic, shall we? You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. Frank Worley has one of the best Easter songs of all time. It's called the Easter Parade. And Frank Worley is a singer of nursing home videos. We uh, There's this production company in central Wisconsin. We found one of their tapes at a thrift store in Milwaukee. And uh, they put out all these like karaoke style songs with this guy Frank Worley singing them but with him in front of a green screen and putting like footage behind him and this is for a song called the Easter Parade happy Easter everybody um, take it away Frank how's the audio so far would you really, say it's, really it's, loud. <laughs> yep. would you say it's perfect yep uh, all right let's just lower that just a little bit here we go Easter bonnet Everybody now with and your Easter the cowboy hat upon it, you'll be the grandest lady in the Easter parade. I'll be all in clover, and when they look you over, I'll be 
the proudest fellow in the Easter, Easter parade, parade on the avenue. Fifth Avenue. Put a little joke in here before taxes. The photographers will snap After taxes. Us, <laughs> and you'll find that you're in the rotogravure. You'll find that you're in the rotogravure. <laughs> in there. <laughs> yeah. It'll happen when you're in the Easter parade. One of those timeless references. Yep. <laughs> find that oh, you're Lakes. in the rotogravure. Oh, I could write a sonnet. Uh, like, what the hell's going on here? There's like a, a bear. Is that a bear? I, it was I like the that you're stopping club. it here. We had like planes. We had like now a bear driving it. And you're like, what's happening now? I, I Everything up until this point, I've been able to understand. <laughs> but now that a bear is it driving a like, bulldozer. It looks like Smokey the Bear, though. He's got the little ranger hat on. You remember when uh, Conan O'Brien, he had the masturbating bear, didn't he? Oh, didn't yeah. that kind of look like the masturbating bear up there? I don't know. <laughs> got a big diaper on. Yeah. Sonic about your Easter bonnet and all the girls. Even the master painting there will be the at the Easter, Easter parade. parade. The girl I'm taking to the Whether Easter you like it or <laughs> not. Just gotta respect the passion Frank Worley sings with. Yes. Oh, definitely. Very definitely, man. Oh, I, I love that little wave at the end. That's a <laughs> gif right there. We got to make that a gif. Is that uh, his actual hand? It looks kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm waving from now on. Yeah. I'm waving like that from now on. Is he waving to the masturbating bear? <laughs> I think that might be me in the lawn chair above him. But oh, anyway. wait, I missed that. Oh, hold on a second. Let me. I think right. like Wait, somehow I that? time traveled back to yeah, see the guy oh, on, the, in the on the right baseball shirt. Yeah, in the lawn chair. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that does look like yeah. That's, that's <laughs> me oh, wearing well. the sunglasses. Yeah. It's seriously no different. Yeah. I don't wear jeans, but otherwise it's about the same. So yeah, I think I time traveled back to the mid eighties. Holy shit, to be you, in think that you know race. yourself. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh yeah, happy Easter, everybody. Um Steve, Steve you, you got something going on. What's, I certainly do. On? So um, this week we are selling out for uh, Dad Time Out. It's a podcast. It's a celebration of all things dads, moms, positive parenting, and pop culture. Uh, it's hosted by four dads from the entertainment world with 12 kids between them. While they're not experts, uh, but they listen, react, and share what they've learned. It's a little pop culture, a lot of parenting, laughter, real stories, and experience. So please check out a Dad's Time Out Um uh, and support a lot the, of dads watch our show even though oh sorry steve what you were saying i was like support the ones to support us this yeah i hear I, I see i see a lot of dads watch the show of course none of us are dads so <laughs> we can't relate to this but uh i think it's cool I, I i would be interested to listen even though i'm not a dad yeah I'm a dog dad yeah i'm a cat dad so but i uh yeah i could dole out some fatherly advice i think I don't know. Yeah, look him up. Right. Dad time I, out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. George, sure you're not a dad, them. are you? Uh are you a dad of anything? Like I'm cat, uh Nick's dog. Plants? Plants? No, there's no I, plants in this house. They I die. They die instantly yeah. the second they come into his his house. Yeah, no, n yeah. nothing. I'm the opposite yeah. of new life. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> I'm the opposite of new life. Uh, um, well, let's uh, let's uh, get into some flying windows. All right. This is the trope, of course, of uh, windows flying to kind of show you what was about to happen in a video. That this is very common in the '90s, and last week it was time for a reset because we had a lot of wild flying windows. Windows that we questioned, even whether they counted as flying windows. And it, I'm glad we reset uh, last week because these are what has been described by the guy who sent these in, Mike, as violent Italian disco flying windows. Ooh. Violent. I'm not familiar with that genre of flying window. Yeah. These are violent flying windows. And I should warn the viewers that if you are prone to dizziness, um, take some drama mean. Oh, you know what it's like. It's like that game 
where they have the cups and then they put the the thing in there and then they switch it around. It's the uh, what's yeah. that called? The the three, like card three card Monty. Card Monty? Yeah, this yeah. is three card Monty windows. Yeah, we call these yeah. Montys. And these are called Montys. Perfect. It's like one of those sliding puzzles too, or like the, there's one empty thing and you got to make the face. You know, it's a little sure. bit like that. Yeah. yeah. genuinely like this song. Wow. Look at those windows flying. Look at the thing. Violent. Wow, I've it's never like staring into the sun. Yeah, you got to be careful. You should wear. You should look through a pinhole in a in a shoebox. Actually, I've, I've see never seen windows. Kind of windows. I don't know if if there's any way that we can like clock them to see how fast those windows are moving. But I don't know if we've ever had faster windows than those. <laughs> I think a standard police radar would work for that. <laughs> you just um, point it at the computer screen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got those windows doing ninety. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the Italians, I mean, say what you will about their work ethic, but they put a lot of work into those flying windows. So. They really do. Uh, flying frescoes. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> so we, uh, we have a guest uh, with us. We have Greg Delisa, who's one of our editors. Uh, so we've known him for a long time, uh, since volume four. Do you want to make Converse people Festival? wait for the, uh, the toe tapping tournament? Uh, you know, people have been waiting. Should we wait till yeah, after I'm, Greg so, or? No, no, no. Let's do it right now. I, I I'm dying okay. to know because I have not looked. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I started an introduction that I shouldn't have. Um, let's, uh, I didn't mean let's to get up no, no, no. intro, but I've been yeah. excited about this for, for, uh, yes. And I haven't looked at the results at all. I, okay, I, I haven't either. It to be a surprise. I haven't and, either. And, and I'm feeling good about Ponderosa or uh, okay. <laughs> I feel much Sussler. better about Ponderosa. I didn't do that on purpose. I seriously didn't do that on purpose. I always call it Ponderosa. Oh, then you man, called it Sussler. Batman cereal is just, yeah. Sussler. Sussler. <laughs> No, okay. it was uh, the the Sizzler promotional video from 1990 versus the Neat Peach Shuffle. 1991. And, uh, 1991. I know the bitch. Okay, so he's uh, <laughs> eating the lettuce burger there. We had people vote on our patreoncom slash festival. You didn't have to be a patron. We got 210 votes. The results were. Oh Neat man! Neat Peach Shuffle by a mile at 69 percent to Sizzler 1991 What's promotional wrong with video 31 percent. <laughs> What's yeah. wrong with these people? How did you present this, Nick? on this thing did you, you present see. it in a fair way march this madness is coming to an end in early april we must okay. declare a winner of the to toe tapping tournament which song should come out on top sizzler neat pete vote with your heart I mean, find out the results next week neat pete is a is a fantastic song but i don't think it's yeah. like a landslide over sizzler like that i thought it would at least be neck and neck no it's well, a there, toe tapper yeah. pete neat pete is a toe tapper and that's where you you missed it's a great Steve, song that, sizzler if you want a motivation you want to go out Really, our army, that should be the uh, the U.S. Army's uh, anthem. Or, or they should they go should into play, battle playing Sizzler. I was going to say they should play it before baseball games. You know, uh, like that it works should too. be like the, the national anthem is the Sizzler yeah. promotional video. But you're I, right. I would the, get on board with that. The, the national anthem is not a toe tapper at all. You're right. Okay. So I respect the hell out of that. Neat Pete Shuffle. So, Steve, you won that one, right? I did. Steve won. And just uh, as a time, reminder. First time winner. A Paris and Stereo, who's a mix a remixer for for the show, occasionally uh, sends in one. This is a, I think we played this one before, but this is his remix of uh, the Neat Pete Shuffle. Put your right foot forward, raise your hand in the air, and bend on over just as far as you can. Pick up the track that's under your feet, and keep on shuffling down the street. Do it alone or with the couple. Now you're doing the Neat Pete Shuffle. Pick up the track that's under your feet. I got a nine inch sales. Down the yeah. street. I mean, so cool. 
congratulations to Steve and the EP Shuffle for winning the Tony Tony Toe. Uh, yep, you said it right. tournament. Yep, you, um, said it, you said it all right. Uh, it, congratulations to Steve because Steve never wins these things. He usually loses these things, and um, so congratulations. I, you guys know, I've been in every single championship game of the Toe Tappy tournament since it started. I've been in all three. I've been a right. The I've guy who a, makes the brackets always ends up winning. <laughs> I, I, I don't tell I the like, judges what to say. I think I was out like I was the first person with both of their picks out last season yeah i'm not 100 yeah. sure that oh you're usually really bad at it yeah you're usually really bad at it but like this year for whatever reason you uh were good at it no i figured it yeah. out now although Some, I, sometimes I even the noticed. sun shines on a dog's ass you that's know what true. i mean that's true <laughs> just gonna take my win and shut up broken clock broken clock for even right twice a day so you know no oh, exactly as the old saying goes all right i was saying <laughs> before about uh greg he's one of our old uh editors like from uh what was it like 12 years ago he edited on some stuff and he's he's putting together he he uh is the program director for our slp our streaming service uh 6.99 a month you can watch all vhs stuff um uh, all of our dvds uh all weird movies rent a friend all sorts of stuff on there uh and he puts that together he curates that for us and he also is our tiktok guy we did you guys steve george did you know that we were on tiktok and that we're wildly popular on tiktok no this is news to me yes we didn't even know that really either because <laughs> Greg's been doing it this whole time. He's like, no, no, no. There's a huge following on TikTok. So, yeah, I guess what we're, yeah. Nick and I are just learning about this now. Anyway, so Greg's going to join us and uh, he has exciting news about a movie that he's working on. And then we're going to show some videos that he made. So uh, take it away, Greg. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Greg hey. Beliso. Hi. Good to be back. Yes. Uh, and you're wearing a suit coat. What the I hell? I have a suit coat on. Yeah, I didn't it's even, a special occasion. I didn't even know you had one. Don't you normally wear like ties with suit coats? Uh, you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> Not, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't let like let everybody know that I'm. I have a suit coat. That's a little, that you know, that's a little too, too much. Okay, you, you can't you, let the cat out of the bag. You wanted to look nice because you're you're uh, producing a new movie that we're going to talk yeah. about later, and you want to look like I'm like a real director, at, yeah. and, and that yeah, I have yeah. a suit coat. Like this is what Steven yeah. Spielberg wears, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I got a, a hot beard. Shot. I got a suit coat on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. No tie, but you don't always need a tie. No, no, no. Ties, okay. yeah, you don't. You, yeah, t ties are out. These modern billionaires, they don't. They just wear a suit coat. And <laughs> exactly. I've seen Elon Musk do that before. Um, You're all a right. tech billionaire. Let, let's uh, <laughs> let's. So, Greg, you you edited for us for a long time. Like you were like, oh, man, you you came on very early. Uh, we, you, you saw us doing a show, and you and Mark Breeze came up to us, and and then we were all editors, and you guys collected VHS, and then he started editing for us, and you made some of our our best videos uh ever more proof we've shown that in the past um you've, you've done some good stuff and we want to show some more as long as you're here cool yeah awesome Excited. one one that i know you cut together that we were gonna do in a show but we, play, we played it live a couple times and it, it was more like you appreciate it with, without an audience you can appreciate it more um yeah. but it was just we have all that we have a whole section of our shelf called stupid concepts so there's like a, a video they made that's just about the pet rock you know that 70s fad there's one that just shows off lava lava lamps yeah um what else is in their video I've aquarium actually, on on the tiktok i've actually posted clips from both of those tapes as well yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. and we, we have things like that that it's like okay this is a video aquarium or the magic eye you know those yeah. magic eye things where you squint yeah. and you see a dolphin you know they made a whole tape that's just different magic guy images well, th these are usually super tedious too. So like it doesn't, mm -hmm. they don't play well at live shows. I think we played it at one live show. And it was just like, everybody's kind of looking at their, their fingers, the, their cuticles. Yeah. Or, well, the, uh, the teleaquarium <laughs> tape is literally just 60 minutes of just a VHS <laughs> camera pointed at an aquarium. And it's not yeah. even like a fancy aquarium. Like it's not, it doesn't even have like interesting fish. It's just like, so something that you'd have in your house with like a little fake, like pirate guy and a reef. And it's and like they, a little, it's very, yeah. very crappy. And they didn't, they didn't even clean it probably yeah, yeah. all right it's just exactly. like let's just let's make this video um exactly. all right let's jump in right, well, yeah let's watch stupid concepts he's the rock he's the rock he's the rock do people know about the pet rock 
we should probably say it was a 70s fad, like a gag gift that you would give. It was a, it was a rock that was in a little crate, and it was just all it was was a rock, but it was a joke gift you would give to people, but it became huge. I think it was something that like the the local morning news show would do uh, would talk about or like a like a morning zoo radio DJ would be like, did you see this thing? It's called a pet rock and they're just selling a rock <laughs> and then people would probably get it for people as other people as gag gifts. And then uh, I've, uh, I've never seen one in the wild. Were they actually rocks or was it like yeah. a fake rock? Nope. OK, real rock, but in like okay. a packaging that looked like a pet crate. And then, right. you know, it, it, the fad lasted a year and then it was done. But then in the, um, the late 80s, this guy bought the license to the Pet Rock to try to bring um, it back with this gotcha. music video. So. Okay. Now, I'm the pet, and that's a fact. And if you don't believe me, you're going to get cracked because I'm the rock, as you can see. The heaviest <laughs> cat that ever did be. Some say I'm bad, and some say I'm rough. I'll tell you one thing, my skin is tough because I'm the rock, and I'm the pet. The baddest piece of granite that you've ever done met. <laughs> you got it right there. <laughs> yeah. It's a saltwater aquarium with some pleasant music. Just <laughs> watching a lava lamp. Oh, there we go. Can you see it? Hold on. Yeah, could you ever get those things to work? We had a poster when I was a kid. Yeah, I always got them to work. Hold on, I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to do. I, I'm, I'm going to assume it's like dolphins. That's uh, usually it's what it is. Yeah, it's dolphins. usually like a fish or something. Yeah, this is, I, I mean, I kind of see something. Then I found myself on a cobblestone street. I got to groove in the city. I got to dig in the beat. So I listened in on the brothers at night. I learned to rap with the best. I got to doing it right. Now I'm the hardest of cats. That I'm the king made of stone. Ain't the boulder been born. Who can capture my throne? Cause I'm the rock. You can put me to the test. No brick has ever beat me. I'm always the best. He's the rock. I think that was supposed to be like Michael Jackson's love, you know? Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, Reference. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now there's a sexy woman holding the lava. We heard sleeve love things are, are great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold on, come on. Nick, do you pause? Hold yeah, I'm on. pausing it. Uh, more dolphins. More dolphins. Yeah. Yep. He's the rock. He's the pet. The oh, Madonna. Daddy yep. can get. He's the rock. I'm gonna keep rapping, you never gonna stop, gonna stick with the showbiz, gonna make it to the top. Then the rock will be so famous. Well, what can I say? I guess I'll do a movie or a Broadway play. Said uh, I'm the rock and I'm the pet. This big bad world ain't seen the end of me yet. go solid montage concepts. solid <laughs> montage i looked i looked up pet rock and uh let's take a here's it is on ebay they're 25 dollars on ebay um oh. yeah and uh, but look at how that's how they would come they they poked holes into like the, like it's a pet and right, uh, right for sure. yeah and see there's that and then here's the inside they just put a rock in there um, yeah it's pretty brilliant i mean you know uh, there's yeah a care guide for the rock the the care and and training of your pet rock 25 bucks um, yeah. I don't know. Is it worth it? Should I order it? Yeah, it's worth it. I think. Okay. Also, it, it yeah. said 1975 on there, but in that video clearly came out in the eighties. The, the pet rock video came out in the eighties. Cause yeah. it had like Madonna and Michael Jackson references. That meant that, that meant that they were milking that concept for a really long time. Well, yeah. Did you hear the backstory? I said that like the, the license faded and then a guy thought I'm going to bring it back in the late eighties. And that oh, was it. I see. I see. They made a direct to video VHS tape and it never took off so that you i know, see that was so it, it, it was, was already a failed late. revival <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was dormant for about a decade the guy thought he'd bring it back and no it didn't work so did Greg, that did, but, he, did that song was that song charting of that did that did that song do well because i don't really goddamn that chance that i can't imagine i mean i'll look well, it up well, but that VHS tape is rare, though. Like, we have a copy of it. I couldn't find it for a while. So I'm like, ah, how much would it be to reorder it? And it was like, it was going for $700 on Amazon. And it's a, literally, it's a three-minute long VHS tape. It's just the music video on the tape, right? That's, that's it. all that's on it. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. else on there. So it's, we have a rare but, tape on our hands. 
Um, they should have done like the thriller making of and done a behind the scenes of the pet <laughs> exactly. rock video. Missed opportunity. Nope. Yeah, like burying nope. your okay. boogie or something. Uh, mm -hmm. So okay, so there's one video. I remember. I remember we were editing. I think it was volume four, and this is maybe like okay. twelve years ago. And we were in that one office where all my stuff got stolen computer and I can't still, remember all that <laughs> i know yeah same it was horrible but what when we were editing that you were telling us about this friend of yours who put together yeah. this boogity <laughs> we yeah. always called your friend boogity and you're like he put together this edit edit of the from this movie called boogity uh you, you introduce it but there are, you you introduce it like what is boogity because i remember you telling us about it and then showing us the boogity video <laughs> and then uh being, being a little disappointed. <laughs> really? I don't, well, that, yeah. That's the best part of the story. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've ever even seen the movie, but the Boogity guy was played by the guy that's the dad in License to Drive. <laughs> so I, yeah, that I recognized him as that. You know, yeah. at, at one point, I think he was like the president of SAG or something. That was like his other claim to fame. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, he just, you know, they, they, they made this cheesy horror movie in the 80s boogie man and i guess i don't know if it's a spin on the boogie man or what it, I, I i confess i've never seen it but he my friend rob cut down all the moments in the movie where he says boogity yeah and i remember being thinking it was really funny and being excited to show you guys that i didn't <laughs> think it was funny and that was the best part we were, we were a little during this boogity part. yeah i was a little disappointed but I, I can't wait to watch it now like 12 years later i Believe it or yeah. not, I, I haven't revisited. Have, I, I haven't gone back to watch it. So well, kind I believe of this was like your a... baseball mm -hmm. thing too. Uh, is you know for those on the Patreon that subscribe at the ten dollar level that you they're available to watch the um, video film for life documentary. And of course, Rob is the one that's all his footage. And oh, Rob is boogity. That's him. Rob yeah. is boogity. You never knew Rob was boogity. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I knew that yeah, Boogity yeah. was one of your friends. I didn't realize that Rob was Boogity. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, of course. Oh, this is blowing yeah. my mind now. All right. Yeah. All right. Nick, do you New have context, a context? Yeah. This, and this is like, I believe this is a Disney, uh, like, goofy horror movie or, you know, TV movie, basically. It yeah. never was in theaters. But here's uh, all the parts where they say Boogity. And what did he do next? He smiled at me. Real funny like. No. That's David Faustino, right? From oh yeah, 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 right, right. Okay, and then I believe this kid is coming up is from Harry and the Hendersons. And I haven't heard a single boogity yet. Well, just wait. <laughs> it said boogity, 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 Look, that's Vincent Chiavelli. Oh yeah, so yeah. Seems like an all-star cast here. Um, I really like this. This still right here. I mean, I think we got our oh, yeah. thumbnail for for this. Oh, week, there but, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was boogity. I oh, mean, that's I went boogity. Longer, that's I it. Cut it down a little bit. I yeah. I mean, it was what? like I think it was two and a half times that long. But, I, uh, yo, it was I want to watch all boogity. Cut off the very beginning where when Rob put opened the video, it says the Criterion Channel on on the front. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I did. I trimmed it for time, but uh, yeah, that was yeah. that was uh, the idea of boogity anyway. I want and, more uh, boogity. Why why would you edit it down? I want to see all boogity. Where's the whole thing? I don't think I, I don't think everybody else wanted to. That's why I, I edited it down. But, you know, it was... Is Boogity is little... still causing scandals uh, this many years later? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very is, controversial. Is Boogity... <laughs> is, is that edit on YouTube? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How many views yeah. does, does it have yeah. at this point? I'm, I want to look that up. Take Boogity, a oh, Boogity YouTube, 155. All right. Um, it's only two minutes know. long. Oh, 191,000. Oh, that's Holy pretty shit. good. That's pretty I good. Mean, I think a lot of people who are about five years younger than us have a lot of affection for that TV movie. It like stuck in there because it's one of those things where it was too, it was probably scarier than it should have been for a, a kid's movie. Um, yeah. Some sort of Thanksgiving era ghost, I believe, was cursing the town. Well, I got to say 12, year, 12 years later, I like Boogity more, but I think if Nick would have played the whole video, I would have liked it less. So that's, hey, that's where I stand. Don't, you know, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> 
well yeah. i'm i'm glad that it's on on uh, youtube now so i'm gonna watch it afterwards watch the whole thing well i'm delighted that greg has come back and he's doing some more editing for us he's kind of managing our our streaming service the slp club putting up new stuff each week but in addition to that um, last year we did a an alf marathon george and i um joe joe and steve called in and we watched the entire season two of alf and then what i didn't realize is that twitch just doesn't save the the whole 12 hour marathon it, it disappears after a while but i got it all on a on a long video file and i sent that off to greg and you've been cutting up those into individual episodes so eventually yeah. people who weren't weren't part of the twitch stream can see us watch the entire season two of Al. yeah yep. I, I, I can't yeah. wait to uh watch that i'll uh, have to tune in and watch you <laughs> it's, yeah, watch it's, it's Elf. actually like 26 hours or something like that it's it's uh it's all you know it's all all the episodes of season two um, it'll be available both uh, kind of chopped into parts in its full entirety on the SLP, and then also short episodes for each uh, individual episode. I think there's what 25 20, episodes or 20. Yeah, yeah, 26, I think. So 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm coming cool. soon. I do get a lot of uh, people asking, "Where's Williams Garage? Is it coming back?" And so, yes, this this uh, will be season two. Will be released what, episodically. Yeah, what I'm going to do with coming. what I'm going to do with that footage, though, I want to get all that footage from uh, Nick's Elf Marathon, and I'm just going to cut together the parts where Nick says "boogity" throughout the entire thing. <laughs> Interesting. And I'm going to put okay. together my own because two it's two hundred thousand views automatically if you make that. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, that's right. All right. All right. Uh, well, we're going to do season three in September, so I'll say boogity even more then, knowing that. Um, but here's what I, I got huge news. So I got an email um, from uh, somebody from the, I think the Austin Film Society, uh, Tiernan. And uh, he, he, he said that they had some incredible footage that I needed to see. It's called the uh, Texas Archive uh, of the Moving Image. And every year they have a roundup where anybody can bring footage and they'll digitize it. It's, you know, 16 millimeter and eight millimeter film. They'll digitize it for free, but then they get to do whatever they want with the footage. So this guy, um, Stephen Schaefer, had a dad named Paul who used to work in TV, not Letterman Paul Schaefer. But he, he gave him this clip and it involved this guy, Michu, who uh he was the guy inside the suit whenever there's a wide shot of elf moving so when he's the puppet it's paul fesco but it's michu who's a famous uh, hungarian circus performer and uh he's like i have michu footage that's never been seen and Whoa. uh this and so this is an exclusive now <laughs> um all right we're breaking news here and greg i thought you'd, you've been watching a lot of Elf, I am likely, steeped so. in Alf, uh, very much so. so. So yes, this is a very exciting. Here's some extremely awkward and never before seen footage of Michu, aka the guy inside the Elf suit. Michu is 33 inches tall, and we have someone here who is 42 inches tall, and he will interview Michu. Okay, are you ready to ask Michu some questions? Yeah, okay. Uh, hi, Michu. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you. I come in the circus, the Rendering Brothers Circus. This is the greatest show on earth. It is. What do you, you like it? I sure do. Good. Great. <laughs> well, Welcome in the Rendering Brothers Bon and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. Why is it the greatest show on earth? This is the best in the world. <laughs> best show in the world. I think he's not going to answer your question. Well, why don't you ask him a question? Okay. How did you get in the circus as a, oh, sure. as a little man, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Right, right, right. What did he say? <laughs> We've been talking to Mishu, Pete Moss and I, and we'd like to say that the, the little man of the circus, Mishu, will be here for all the shows at the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus as they're in town. This is Paul Schaefer for Big News on the scene at the circus. And me too. Yes, you too. <laughs> this is his act here. Hey, what are you doing? Come on. Hey, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> That's good. That's, That's good. it. So the circus came to Texas and uh, I love was there. Yeah, that was amazing. Is Mishu uh, one of the Munchkins? Did you say? No. Was it okay? He was just a famous Hungarian um, circus performer who went uh, came to America. I guess three years before that was shot, 
and uh, started becoming a performer. And okay. uh, yeah, and so what, late, later in life was tapped to be Alf. And, and so, but he didn't speak English, right? That's why it was so awkward, right? He just didn't. Yeah, he was. Know how to, yeah, he, he was three years into living in the country, so you know it's tough to pick up a language. So at that point, yeah, he just like, kind of nodded and said the things that he knew how to say, which is welcome see, to the Ringling Brothers. I want to see more interviews from the the ventriloquist dummy. I thought he was a great interviewer. <laughs> I, I did. Yeah, Pete Moss. The uh, man. Well, the man wasn't he, as good. Paul Schaefer. Yeah, no. Was as good. <laughs> no. But yeah, apparently this uh, Stephen Paul's son gave like tons of home movies, and like they just thought that I would get a kick out of the Mishu footage, and uh, I absolutely did. So you did. Yeah, uh, I did too. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So let's uh, uh, let's play a clip from uh, uh, Psycho Ape, uh, Greg's movie Psycho Ape. When did you make this? A couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, 2019, we finished it up, and it's been doing really well. We're, we've been having screenings across the country. At one screening in Delaware, it made a guy puke in the theater, which that's, is very exciting. Yeah, that's high uh, praise. That is high praise. Yeah. Also, I should say you made a movie called Hectic Knife, which I absolutely loved, um, and Troma put it out, right? Oh, you have it on yeah, VHS. Both, so both, yeah. both of which are available on VHS. Uh, these are actual VHS copies. There's a very limited amount of these. I think there's only about 25 left of uh, Psycho Ape and maybe 50 left of Hectic. Um, and there were only like 100 made of each. So there's not many left. Uh, but yeah, uh, those are and where can people Where can people get it? Like, where can people get the um, You can contact uh, me or Addison Binnack. I don't know if I can get you the, like, his. Oh, I'll put it all in the, I'll, I'll put it all in the, uh, the, the description of the YouTube okay. page. So, yeah, cool, so cool. tell us about Psycho Ape, though. It's on, uh, you can get it on our streaming service. Um, but What's what's the brief synopsis? Psycho Ape is the uh, dumbest, cheapest ape movie ever made. Uh, <laughs> as it says on the back of the box, it's it's the the movie that everyone said could easily be made. Uh, so uh, that's the best. You know, that's the best tagline of all time. Easily, <laughs> easily the best. <laughs> Uh, what I like too is that is that you like you, there's you know there's outtakes whenever you're filming a movie and you just left them in in the oh, yeah. finished movie. So here's yes. a little bit of a a newscast uh, called the low budget film news. Was it called? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So here's a little bit of that. Local paper, the Banana Man sign spinner was actually violently spat upon. He was murdered and died. I think that's shat upon. Yeah. Shat? Shat. shat? With the gorilla shitting on it? <laughs> Is that what happened here? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh my God. Correct. You know, that kind of shit. Right? <laughs> He's that part. Okay, yeah. okay. He's okay. <laughs> Local favorite, the banana man, sign spinner, was actually violently shitted on. Shat. Shatted on. Shat? shat? That, that's a word. Okay. Yeah, it's past tense. Okay, I thought it was shitted. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Okay, okay. Local favorite, the banana sign man spent the banana man sign spinner was actually violently shat upon as he was murdered and died. <laughs> This, this, is the, this is the finished movie. These aren't like this isn't like the outtake bonus reel. This is it should say that on the box too. This is the finished movie. Yeah, exactly. What, this was that the, the part where the guy threw up right there? Yeah, it actually is. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. It's I'm amazed that that guy, that actor, had never heard of the word "shat," the past tense of I know shitty. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, he'd yeah. never heard that before. But the uh, generational yeah. thing. I thought everybody yeah. knew that. Yeah, maybe it's. I thought it was. I thought it was an old word, though. Um, also, can I ask, like, so when you made that movie, did you like get? Uh, were you in front of a Walgreens or a CVS or something? Did you like get yeah. their permission in order to do that, or did you just no. go there and shoot it? Okay, no, yes, Addison that's like. Used to work at that Walgreens. By the so way, I love your cat there. problems. I love your cat problems that you've been having this entire show. Keep them up. Yeah, yeah. Um, cat problems. <laughs> Where's the elf when you need him, right? <laughs> no, exactly. Get me shoe on this. Um, wait, wait. So, so you said that the guy, the director, worked at the Walgreens? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But we right. just we just stole it though. We we didn't. You know, there were no permits. <laughs> I, yeah. We. Yeah. <laughs> nobody was nobody was at like the permit office of like Detroit or New York like, getting <laughs> permits for for any of that. Shoot the uh, sign spinning scene uh, <laughs> yeah, in yeah. front of the Walgreens. Okay. Yeah. Is... <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, it's my favorite kind of movie. So, all right, you got a new movie coming out. Uh, yeah, what, tell us about it. What? Yeah, what? so it's it's called Bad Brain. We're shooting in June. Uh, Kansas Bowling, who was in Psycho Ape, uh, people know her from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and uh, Verachika, the Glenn Danzig movie that's supposed to be really terrible. Um, she's one of the stars. Uh, we have Whitney Moore from Birdemic, so she was like the star of Birdemic. Uh, wow. She's also one of the stars. You got an all star cast here. You got like legitimate like actors who are have yeah. done things. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Um, it's about uh, a Ace Ventura look alike that's also a serial killer. Uh, it's about uh, an all girl Elaine Bennis themed uh, punk band called The Big Salad. <laughs> um it's uh it's uh, about a bunch of interconnecting stories uh, that all kind of converge in la uh but really it's a romantic comedy about a guy that gets lobotomized and turned into a, a zombie-like uh, creature for for a while and it, it features a sentient pile of talking vomit uh that uh you know uh, has some mischief happen with with them and it has some stop motion animation robots uh, in there working on a brain assembly line in another dimension um, so it's got a bunch of really fun stuff going on. It, and, and you wrote I've all seen, this, right? I've, I've seen some yeah. of your stop motion stuff too, Greg. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of the stop motion stuff is actually in the Indiegogo campaign video that we're doing. So we're we're shooting in June and we have the script broken down. We have the schedule is set, we have the cast is all ready to go, we have most of the locations. Uh, but, but we're just trying to put some money together to kind of get get things, you know, really patched together and made and going smoothly. And when we shoot in June, and like I said, yeah, the other some of that stop motion stuff is in the Indiegogo video. And, nice. Yeah. So okay, so are we going to say like if we if if Melinda's contribute two thousand dollars total to the movie that we'll do the yeah. Melinda's presents uh, graphic? You're cool with that? I would be honored. Yeah. Okay. I absolutely. So, so like right now, I think we have I think uh, VCR party has uh, funded three movies at this point that are that, yeah, that will have viewers the... are movie producers yes oh, that's it's incredible it's so Amazing. like the very first thing people will see will be the melinda's present shingle that comes up and it goes I love hello it. melinda's and a, and a cool like moog uh i would be honored to put that at the beginning Absolutely. okay and then it's and then a sentient pile of puke comes on screen and you're like right just welling with pride that you this is a movie you produced you gotta find exactly. the guy you gotta find the guy who vomited at psycho ape and see if he'll vomit at this new movie and just like <laughs> that's right yeah. show him hectic knife see if he vomits at all of your movies and then like he's like your poster guy you know like yeah, 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 yeah. He gives it like a yeah. thumbs up, like I will vomit at this movie. That is true. He's some, that guy is somewhere in Delaware. Uh, I don't know what where he is or what he's doing right now, but he, uh, yeah, we that that banana poop. Guy I didn't hear a word you said. You, your cat problems. I didn't hear a word you said because of your cat problems. <laughs> he just looked at us, right in the camera. That fool. What does he want? What does that cat want? I don't know. He's just kind of hanging out. I don't really know. Give him some scritches. Just give him some scritches. All right. Grab him. Hold on to him. Give him some scritches. What's his name? Momo. Momo. Okay. Greg, can, can you uh, to take us out of here? Can you make um, Momo say boogity, boogity, boogity? <laughs> <laughs> can you do that, Momo? Can you say boogity? Okay. You, d you didn't even try. I know. Uh, Greg. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks so much for wearing a suit coat and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. happy boogity yeah. to you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm so excited about the new movie. So oh, yes. man. thank you guys so much. I appreciate it so much. Charles Durant Pellies, Charles Durant Pellies, Charles Durant Pellies. Thanks to, to Greg Deliso. George, how about that Mishu footage? That was incredible. I can't believe you didn't embargo it for the Willie's Garage uh, relaunch whenever that happens uh, after September. I leave the country. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, we'll go you, to Hungary. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna do another Willie's Garage in September, or like the, yeah, we'll do season three. We'll do another marathon. Oh, I see. You'll do the whole try to raise some money. One yeah. fell swoop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, yeah. one. Um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty amazing to see see the guy inside the elf suit there, pretty young before before his elf days. It was uh, something that I'm never going to forget. Okay, good. I believe you. Let's get into some <laughs> cyber videos.
This is the segment of the show where we uh, teach you how to find videos on the internet, not just on VHS tapes. And um, we played uh, one, I guess that was on Reddit a few weeks ago of a guy kind of on a motorcycle going down steps and then crashing into a, a wall and falling off. And there was a, the, the uh, motorcycle even beeped at an opportune time. And I think we described it as like the scene where Pee Wee gets the bike from Pee Wee's Big Adventure and, you know, goes straight into a, a, uh, a billboard billboard. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we have a lot of enterprising viewers and Ross from St. Louis did a mashup that I thought I would show today of the Pee Wee scene with that uh, clip of the out of control motorcycle. It's called Pee Wee's Big Stare Adventure. <laughs> that's it that's it so the oh, yeah. bikers yeah. reacting yeah. Nice work, I, I thought it worked yeah. like a good little mashup there. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a good that's mashup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Ross from St. Louis, uh, we're going to go out uh, with, uh, he, you know, he, uh, as is tradition for the Toe Tappy Tournament, he makes a one shining moment with all the yeah. all the contestants. <laughs> he sent that to me the other uh, the other day. And so I'm going to play that at the end of the show. So thanks, Ross. Oh, nice work. Fantastic. Uh, Steve, what do you got? Uh, well, baseball season has started again, so I'm replaying one of my favorite all-time. We've watched it before, but it's one of my favorite all-time, Jock Sham. Um, it features Aki Atsuka as he battles ants in a pest patrol, uh, but it's got oh. everything I love. It's got uh, uh, an athlete singing. It's got uh, CGI that he has to interact with. I mean, it's a real, it's, wow. it, it's a real Jock Sham. Hi, I'm Porky of Porky's Pest Control. Ants love to drop in on picnics, get fat, and then come into the house for a drink. Ants can be rude, so call Corky's now and get rid of your ant problem for good. Corky's Pest Control, we're here for you. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky! Was, do you think he was actually with them? Can you bring it back up? Do you think, or do you think they CGI'd or, or green screen? I think we had this exact same conversation with them. Oh, did we? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I love it. By the way, this is why you got to re 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 review them. And also, I, didn't even I, question. I, I, re I just assumed he was there, but I retain no information at all. I'll ask these questions, but I won't retain the answer. You, you Literally. and me both. Um, oh what's going on? I can't remember dust what we decided. Yeah, we got your desktop. My whole desktop. Here. Oh, great! Yeah. Oh, I want to see inside the food that built experts. I know. Uh, yep. Folder. Oh, yes. By the way, my next show, uh, I'm gonna, you know, tell you guys what it is right now. But wrestling. So you'll see a lot of new wrestling stuff. Oh, so, all right. Yeah. Okay. See, he looks. He looks like he's lit differently than them, doesn't he? Oh, he's lit. <laughs> he's lit for sure. Yeah. Differently. Differently. Hmm. Yeah, I think he's there. I, did, I didn't. It doesn't seem like it was CGI to me. It seems like that'd be more work. Play than it, you'd play put it. Into this. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to it a little bit more. But they, right. they the shadows look wrong. Corky's best control. Doesn't this, the lighting look different on him? Call one yeah, probably. They probably put the bounce on him. Corky! Yeah, but you can't pinpoint a bounce like that. I don't know. I think the front two guys were in somewhere else. Oh, OK. They were there, my but the guys behind them weren't there. I I don't know. It's hard okay. to tell. Shadows on the ground for both of them. She they're comes close to hitting right. his arm here. Can you, I don't know. Yeah, I think they're there. Yeah, can you call Corky's right now and ask him if he was actually there for that group photo for the group? Uh... Yeah, you got it. 10-4. Are you actually calling him? Yeah, one oh, one zero two. If then, not, their their timing's pretty good. What's like, the what's the swings? baseball players? Yeah. Thank you for calling Corky's Pest Control. Your call may be monitored for quality assurance. Their, their call's going to be monitored, too. Akiatsuka. <laughs> press 2. For commercial, press 3. For accounting... For questions for about the... <laughs> commercial. <laughs> about the green for cyber screen, videos. <laughs> remain on the line or press 0 for further assistance. Okay. Okay. Yes. Operator. Yes. So uh, there's the... Do you see the pitcher's name, Nick? Is it a pitcher? There's, there's an answer. Yeah. 
Hi, Monique. I had a quick question. I, I'm watching the uh, commercial with Padres pitcher Aki Atsuka in, in it. Have you seen that one? Oh, well, it's pretty funny. There's like animated ants in it. And um, at the end, the baseball player is doing, you know, the he's with all the pest control experts and he's doing swinging his arms and stuff. And his lighting looks different. So we're questioning whether he was really there or if he was CGI'd in. Do you know? Do you know about this portion you haven't seen? Oh, she doesn't. Oh, OK. Is there somebody there? Um, is there someone there who might? Line right now. Ask her if maybe there's a bounce. Maybe there's a bounce that was on him specifically. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just thought they that they had a bounce that was hitting uh, a lighting bounce. Yeah, a lighting bounce that was just but, hitting but him. Joe a better, that it would but Joe uh, thought Joe thought it. He, he thought the more likely scenario was that he was CGI'd in this local commercial, but I don't know. That seems pretty far fetched. So thought you could settle a bet. All right. Well, we love the commercial either way. Keep up the good work. Perfect. Thank you, sir. You have a great day. You too. Okay. All right. Successfully right. wasted someone else's time. Uh, <laughs> that's what we do Mission now. accomplished. <laughs> yeah. That had not done. Do you think you'll get a phone call back from, uh, from the other? Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. The fact that I didn't leave a number probably would prevent that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, let's see, George, what do you got? Oh, we're still doing cyber videos, aren't we? All right. Okay. So uh, here's a crazy moment from live TV in the 80s. I'm not sure if either of you guys are familiar with it, but to promote the first WrestleMania in 1985, Mr. T and Hulk Hogan appeared on a show called Hot Properties hosted by Richard Belzer. Does this sound familiar to you? No. Um, okay. So and Belzer kept needling them. He was like playing on the idea that wrestling's fake and was saying like, oh, do a, do a wrestling move on me. And they kept saying no, but... Finally, Hogan relented, and uh, here's what happened. Show me one of the moves that you, you use. What's well, your famous move? Well, I'm going to have to stick to the basics with you. The floor is a little hard here, and I don't want you getting hurt. There's something well, I don't want you getting hurt either, so, you know, be careful. Yeah, you can apply, you know, nice and easy if you'd bend over. Ah! <laughs> no, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, that's All right, okay. Now, the first thing you need to know about amateur wrestling. Yes. Or professional wrestling <laughs> or submission. Well, you just tell me, brother, when you want him to quit squealing, okay? All right. It's called a front chin lock. Yeah. How about it, T? Keep it like that for a little while. Because he's all right. He's just sleeping. He's sleeping. Really? That's, I, was, I was asleep a hole. He'll be all right. He's waking up now. That was a serious right, for a lot of people. See? It works. All right, bro. That's for real? We'll be right back after this word from you know who. Yeah, we'll be right back. He looks flustered. Well, I don't know if you could see that, but um, first of all, that is blood on the back of his jacket. Oh. No. Wow. Yes. And look on the floor. There's like a puddle of blood right, right there. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Um, anyhow, Richard Belzer said wow. he had no memory of what happened when he woke up. He just threw the commercial when he realized he was on TV. Um, he nailed it though. It was, he what's nailed that? that. He nailed that because I was totally. I thought he was in on the bit. Yeah, until he showed and, me the blood. <laughs> but <laughs> because it was live, the producer had to come out and finish the interview um, in front of a group of in front of a crowd that included fifty kids from a local um, <laughs> school that Mr. T demanded had to be there for them to appear. <laughs> Um, and but Richard Belzer fractured his skull and injured his spine, and it resulted in a 1990 court case that he won. And he used the proceeds to buy a um, a uh, uh, a chateau in France <laughs> um, that he called um, uh, either Shea Hogan or Hulk Hogan Arms. But that's a crazy wow. moment from live TV in the 80s that I wow. never knew about. Who did he sue? He sued Hulk Hogan personally or the WWF? Both. Okay. Wow. Uh, and they settled, but uh, for a lot. I, I have a two, two Richard Belzer stories. One, he's the first comedian I saw live at Summerfest in Milwaukee when I was a kid. And I was like, that's what I want to do with my life. He did Ronald Reagan impressions. So I did Ronald Reagan impressions. <laughs> and and uh, look, look, here I am doing it. Um, but uh, the other thing is, there's one time where 
I would normally take a cab to LaGuardia, the airport nearest me. But one time I took the bus there because I was trying to save money. And, you know, it's just kind of the dregs who would take the bus to the airport because why not just pay for the cab? And I see some guy with a satin law and order jacket. It was Richard Belzer. He, uh, <laughs> at the height of law and order fame, was taking the bus to LaGuardia. With so. a law and order jacket. Yeah, wearing a law and order jacket. Yep, it was him. So I guess uh, he got that. He, he spent all his money on the Chateau, so he's got to save money for a, for wow. a bus fare. Wow. Yeah. Okay. He was a comedian first, right? I always thought, I always yeah. know him as Law and Order first. Like, I, yeah, I didn't know his stand comedy up. at all. Yeah, but he's a stand up who, but he was a serious actor, right? Like, I guess Ice T was in, it was in Law and Order too, right? It's a weird yeah, I mean, I, I first knew him as a comedian. And then what was it, Homicide, part of the, like, the Dick Wolf uh, extended universe that became, that, and then, but he wasn't the funny same in the show, right? Um, no, no. I mean, it was like a show about like okay. crime, um, not hilarious crimes. Um, all right, good Belzer information, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I don't. I didn't do I am Jesus week because I wanted to do something else, and I know that we're like we're scrambling for time now. But I wanted to show some nice things. Yeah, I wanted to show this last week because it was closer to April Fool's, but we're, I don't know, we're always just running over time. We have, we have so much goddamn content, don't we? There's so much, there's too much it's goddamn endless content. endless font, yeah. So, okay, so every uh, April Fool's, I send out texts to people with the opening line of, hey, did you hear what happened to Nick? That's the bit. And you guys have both, Steve and George, you both received that text. Hey, did you hear what happened to Nick? And then I usually say something terrible happened to Nick. And it's usually because he was, he's vegan. And the doc, the, he had to go to the hospital because something vegan related happened to Nick. Mm-hmm. And then I Common keep problem. trying. Yeah. yeah. But I do it really early in the morning on April Fool's Day so that people think that something happened to Nick. And the response is usually, no, what? What happened to Nick? And then I uh, make up a thing like, oh, he had uh, he has scabies, like he has really bad scabies. I don't even know what scabies are, but uh, I'll say that that affects vegans. Okay, yeah, yeah. it's a vegan related (laughs) illness. Exactly. So uh, I'm running out of people to to send this text to at this point. And but then uh, I so I was scrolling through my text and I came across Ben Steinbauer, who's the director of Winnebago Man. He directed the Chop and Steel documentary about Nick and I that's coming out this summer. And I was like, oh, I'll get him uh, with this. And so I sent him a thing, said, hey. I'll pray on his human empathy. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, that, that there have been, sucker. There have been people on the show who, who said that, who, who have labeled me as a sociopath. And I don't think I'm doing anything with this, like, that's going to help that image here. So um, this is, uh, I, I texted him. I said, hey, did you hear what happened to Nick? He said, no, what? And I said, Nick woke up with COVID today. It's pretty bad. Drop him a text if you can. He goes, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I'll definitely text him. Um, I, I, I went with COVID because I was like, I think I could probably get him with this one. And then, Topical. but I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> but then I didn't have anywhere to go after that. So then uh, I, I said, we're all going to send him a bushel of roses while he's in the hospital if you want to chip in. And I sent that to Nick. I sent the screen grab to Nick. And I was like, did I go too far with bushel of roses? <laughs> like, and then I think Nick, you, you were like, yeah, you went too far with bushel of roses. You're like, he's not going to buy that. Right. Yeah. I mean, a bushel, I found out is 67 pints. It doesn't measure <laughs> the quantity of roses. I think a bush of roses, you know, a rose bush, but a bushel well, is. I was going to say a yeah. dozen roses, but that sounds too Valentine's day. So I was like, I'm just going to go with a bushel, a bushel of roses. So hogshead. It's usually, it's usually, it's usually more like measures apples and things like that, but um sure. A uh, bushel of roses. A hogshead. I should have said a hogshead of roses. Next year I'm gonna get somebody. Okay, so then uh so then Ben responded and he said, Hospital, Jesus, are you serious? I said, Yeah, he's all by himself too. Allie is in Atlanta and I'm in Florida. And then uh he responded, he said, Are you serious? Oh, uh, he said he said, Oh no, I definitely want to throw in like for the bushel of roses. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh so then i responded and i said okay cool we're all chipping at 20 dollars." and i sent them my venmo <laughs> to see <laughs> what is wrong with <laughs> <you>? <laughs> so then uh 
So then he, uh, he said, he's vaccinated, right? I said, yeah, and boosted. His mom told me they think that being vegan contributed to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that uh, he goes, and, <laughs> autoimmune <laughs> vegan, uh, veganism thing. She yeah. goes, oh, shit. He goes, oh, shit. He needs protein. I said, I think he's pretty delirious. Delirious Allie, Nick's girlfriend, just told me that he's mad at himself for being vegan all these years. <laughs> And then Ben said, I think he meant to say, whoa, there. He goes, I never thought I would hear him say that. I hate that he's there alone. (laughs) Showing Uh, empathy. uh Uh-huh. And then I said, uh, then he said, are his parents going to fly? And I said, not sure about his parents, but he actually ate some scrambled eggs today. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I might as well just throw in the towel. Let me uh, whisk up some eggs again. 26 years, but. I was a fool. Uh, he's, he goes, holy shit, I never thought I'd see the day when Nick would eat some scrambled eggs. And then uh, I responded with, uh, he goes, wait a minute. And I said, this is fucked up. His mom said that his, when, when I saw, wait a minute, I was like, I got to go in. I got to go all in here. So he said, this is, I said, this is fucked up. His mom said his belly button won't stop bleeding for some reason. And then he goes, it's April Fool's Day. And I said, they can't stop the constant flow of belly button blood. The scrambled eggs aren't working. And the it, the jig was up at that point, so he uh, he knew. But I wanted to get that twenty dollars from you know. I was like that that could be the coolest part. And I was like, oh man, he didn't even contribute the twenty dollars to Nick's bushel of flower fund. But then I checked my my email moments after that, and look at that Venmo. Ben Steinbauer paid you twenty dollars. <laughs> ben Steinbauer paid you flowers is what the yeah the bushel <laughs> of flowers. Right? And I got him on it. And you probably uh, don't remember this, Joe, but you got me. I'm trying to remember how many years ago it was. I was actually trying to search my text, but you got me with the basically the exact same thing. And <laughs> it was probably 2014 or 2015. And it's about believe, COVID. It was really you no, know, it wasn't about COVID. I believe um, it was he had a sexual uh some sort of <laughs> sexual disease. Yeah, it's usually and, that. Yeah, yeah, it's usually having to do with Nick's genitals or like yep. something's wrong with <laughs> and Nick's it is. genitals. It's the first thing is genitals getting are up vegan. in the morning. You know, you're like, oh, who keeps texting? Me? And yeah. then you get up, you check your texts, and yep. all of a sudden you're like worried about Nick. And you know, it's probably a similar thing that you, uh, right? Oh, Form uh, 20, 2020, two weeks into alone. the pandemic. Yeah. You, Nick, <laughs> Joe wrote, Nick's on the uh, wake up to a, uh, Nick's on the hospital ship. But it's not, and then and then you thought better of it because you know the world was coming to an end and you wrote but it's not COVID. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the hospital ship's just here for COVID and vegan related genital ailments. Oh, that was the ship that was docked outside the Javits Center to do. Right. Right. Oh, I just for that. COVID and you, Nick. Yeah. Right. But he's he's on the he's on the COVID ship, but he doesn't have COVID. It's probably <laughs> Right. Vegan, Seems like it'd be right. more dangerous to a put him on the genital related thing. Okay. God, I'm a fuck I'm a fucking genius, aren't I? Am I not <laughs> oh, a genius? I was gonna go with that. <laughs> yeah. go that was the, the noun I picked. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm man. I wanna I wanna show you another uh, genius move of mine. So we did a show last week, and this is another nice thing. Um we, we were doing a show in uh, Menominee, Wisconsin. There's UW Stout. It's a state school, UW Stout. And then um, we had uh, 400 students at this show and it was, it was parents weekend and there was just, it was packed. And the, the student advisor came up to us and said, Hey, I'm going to do the introduction. What should I say? And we usually just say like, say we were on Jimmy Fallon, say we were on Jimmy Kimmel. And then I always throw in one other thing about Nick on it. And I said, and also Nick is a vegan. And that's all that I'll say. I saw her write it down. She wrote down, Nick is a vegan. <laughs> and I was, and I'm always just like excited. Like, how are they going to pitch this? Like there were no questions afterwards either. It was just like, so then I, this uh, journalist for the, for Stout, um, a journalism student uh, asked us some questions. I said, can you record the intro of the woman saying the, uh, you know, here's Joe and Nick, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel. Um, and he said yes, but he he came too late to it. But you can still hear him, her say, "And Nick's a vegan." So uh, here, <laughs> just observe silence. Here we go. He he turned on his camera right as she said that Nick was a vegan. And then is a vegan. Here is VCR party. <laughs>
Yeah, so that was the intro. He's uh, <laughs> he's not a cinematography student. He's a, a journalism student, and so he really missed all the important stuff. But he did. She did say Nick is a vegan. He said one of them is a vegan. It's just oh, is that what she said? One yeah, of them is a vegan. They've been they've been on Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, and one of them is a vegan. Here they are, VCR party. <laughs> And then afterwards, my worst nightmare, somebody's like, so why are you a vegan? You're the vegan one, right? Like, yeah. All right. It's uh, I'll go into my background of this um, with this stranger. She's like, oh, because my boyfriend's a vegan and I wanted to find out why you did it. And I was like, oh, my worst nightmare is having to talk about that in public. So uh, mission right. accomplished. I'm a genius. Yeah. That's the point of the whole story is that I'm a genius. So um, yeah. those are nice things. Okay, I have another real quick, real quick thing that I want to show. So I asked uh, Melinda Mixers last week. So we we uh, have uh, Melinda's who are very talented, who know how to sample and how to make music and how to take some of our weird videos and the music from them and turn them into something else. And so I put forth this song, uh, Jim's Coins in, in Hilldale, uh, a Madison, Wisconsin based song, uh, local jingle, it's 15 second commercial. Uh, and I'll just play the commercial once for you. Jim's Coins in Hilda. Gold is up. Buying and selling. Top prices for gold, silver, coins, jewelry, and more. Honest, professional, and locally owned for 21 years. Cash in today at Jim's Coins in Hilda. Madison. <laughs> just kind of been obsessed with that <laughs> song for a long time. Because it looks like they're all being held hostage here, too, doesn't it? Like, I assume that's hey, Jim. Jim. That's Jim in the middle, right? That's got to mm -hmm. be Jim, right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, Evan responded and he made a Melinda mix. He told me that he wrote a whole rap for this and his wife, Sarah, didn't like the rap. He had this whole backstory with this rap and she didn't like the rap. Um, and so he just sent the music. But I was like, send the rap. So I have just the music yeah. that he was using for the Jim's Coins and Hilldale rap. Hopefully we'll get the rap next week. But here's what he came up with. Smooth. Here it comes. Listen. Jim's going to kill them. Yeah. So nice work, right. Evan, but I want to hear the whole rap. Um, yeah. Farmer, Farmer Dan, he did a mashup. So, George, you're, one of your songs in the Toe Tapping Tournament was called George, right? That's correct. From Arizona, what was it plumbing? Is that what they did? Uh, well, all sorts of things. Whatever oh. Pond Five had a uh, <laughs> had footage of, they could do. Okay, so uh, uh, Farmer Dan put together a mashup of Jim's coins and Call George. Jim's coins and stamps, they're really champs. They'll buy the possessions of your dead gramps. Called Jim's coins in Hilda. You're so damn broke and buy no weed to smoke. Need cash in your pocket so you can tell. Called Jim's coins in Hilda. Madison. <laughs> Madison. <laughs> All right, nice work, Farmer Dan. Uh, and wow. then the last, the last one here, Bob from Hall. Bob from Hall uh, has a band called The Dead Past. He's on YouTube. He's a, a frequent Melinda Mixer contributor, and he's, uh, man, he's really good. Uh, he did uh, a punk rock version of Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Uh, so this is the, the third one. We have more coming up uh, for these, but uh, we're going to go out on Bob from Hall's. Here we go. Jim's coins in Hilda. 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 Jim's coins in coins in Hilda. Jim's in Hilda. Jim's coins in Hilda. Jim's coins in Hilda. Jim's coins in Madison. <laughs> it's a great 
punctuation at the end. Oh, wow. I, you know, and I've said it before. I'll say it again. Of all the Melindas in the world, we have the most talented Melindas on this show. It's so true. Thank, you. thank you, Melinda Mixers. we got some more uh, Melinda Mixes uh, coming up. I've got some emails, people saying that they're working on it. Uh, so, yeah, more uh, Jim's okay. Coins of Hilldale coming up. I will, coming at, I like coming at you. Coming at you. All right. I like that the mixes are coming back. Thanks yeah. for sending those in. We got to do more of those. Uh, well, our uh, our buddy does the podcast that uh, we are officially sponsoring and put our name behind called Bastard Tapes. I've thoroughly been enjoying it. It's all um, it's about it's basically what we do, but for songs that have been left and forgotten. And uh, he's discovering them. And uh, yeah, and providing are, context and backstory and curating yeah. them into themes. And yeah, he, he just sent me one today. It's called Badapted for the Musical Stage. So, like, bad, adapted, adapted for the musical stage. So, it's all musical uh, parodies or uh, adaptations of uh, songs. So, I haven't listened to it yet. I'm going to upload it tonight. So, I can't okay. wait. I'm excited for it. Excuse me. So that'll be out uh, tomorrow for for you on iTunes and Spotify and all those. Um, and a life on the farm. You know, we talked a lot about uh, Greg's movie tonight, but um, a life on the farm, the movie about the weirdest video we've ever seen, is uh, premiering. We have premiere dates at uh, the Milwaukee Film Festival and Calgary Underground Fil Film Festival, two of our favorite film festivals. And you can get tickets now. Check the description and YouTube for the link. And uh, we're, I think if you chipped in, which many Melinda's did, uh, you're going to get the Kickstarter rewards. So we're working on making the DVDs and all the, uh, the swag for that, that movie, too. So we're excited for you all to finally see that movie. Yeah, and because we've always been kind of uh, mysterious about what the movie's about, uh, we've shown some clips before, but we haven't shown all of them. And so this documentary shows all of them. Um, so, uh, yeah, look for that. And then hopefully it'll be out this summer for everybody to see. Um, what else we got here? Um, oh, we're going to do an EP mode, uh, with, uh, uh, cheering make school fun, Jim W. Hawkins. I, Nick, I thought we were going to do all, all bodily functions this month. Are we not doing that anymore? Not, not a popular idea turns <laughs> out from our patrons. So we did it. Two weeks of a video about uh, urine was uh, enough for people. I think they needed a break. So we'll do one of a creepy guy interviewing uh, middle school girls cheerleaders. We'll just change it up a little bit. It's and, called yeah. Uh, it's, it's called Cheering Makes School Funds. This guy from San Diego named Jim W. Hawkins, and he I think he put out over five hundred episodes of this. What are we? We're at like two oh nine now. This is two oh nine. Yeah. He, he's put out over five hundred where he goes on location to middle school girls cheerleading tournaments or wherever they're mm -hmm. cheering events. events and he uh interviews them afterwards so it's just like older man interviewing like 12 year old girls it, was, it was, seems creepy but it's not because he genuinely loves cheerleading so uh i want to show a clip <laughs> this is a deep cut clip nick i don't know if you've even seen this one before no, maybe not um but he sets up his own camera he has his own microphone he does all his own technical stuff um, he doesn't have a crew. Here's a, a quick scene from Jim W. Hawkins. And I kept this in intact as much as I could. Here we go. We have someone here that has a contestant or runner, I guess I should say, inside the... Oh, and, and sometimes, I mean, there's like a marathon going on. So he did a marathon on this one. It's not all cheerleaders, but it's, mm. still, it's still called Cheering Makes School Fun. Marathon coming up. Uh, who are you looking for? I'm looking for my dad. He's been doing this now for since I think '84. You did the 5K. Yeah. How was the 5K this morning? It was great. My goodness, but the clock on the wall tells me we're out of time for this episode of Sure. You think that was a, a good cinematography and a good edit? Would you say yeah, that both yeah. of those things were? It was good cinematography like, and also good edit. Yeah. He was <laughs> in a in a in a blizzard interviewing uh somebody. <laughs> Is that the son from um, uh, Teletubbies or something? There's just like <laughs> yeah. A, yeah. eyes radiating features. Yeah. yeah, I think the cinematographer of this particular scene was the guy from the journalist from journalism student from Stout. <laughs> he actually did this. It, it he might shot have been. this. Yeah, yeah. Did the five K. Yeah, How was the five K this morning. It was great. My goodness, but the clock on the wall tells me we're out of time for this episode of Cheering Makes School Fun. I'm sure glad you're able to join us and hope you'll join us again regularly, same time, same station, on most of these same cable outlets. I'd like to say adios now and keep cheering. So, I mean, I, 
he has a passion for cheerleading and it's it's i he's I, written two books about it um we have them both so yeah i think uh all right so we're gonna watch a complete episode of cheering yes. makes school fun yes, for EP. yes all right we got one shining moment to go out on with ross it's the you know what the ncaa tournament does but it's for all our jingles thanks to everyone every contestant and all the all the jingles that uh didn't make the cut. Congratulations, Steve. First time you ever won anything, right? This is your first time you ever won no, anything? No, I won the yellingest. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, it's the first time I that. won this one. I don't remember that at all. I'll have to look. Have hey, you ever won the yellingest? Huh? Have you ever won the yellingest? No, but nobody really cares about that one. <laughs> no. It's a toe-tapping tournament that people care about. So, But congratulations. Next week... Uh, yeah, congrats, Steve. And <laughs> next week on the show, um, the Aw- Vanity Fair Esquire writer uh, Mike Sachs is going to show us some of his hilarious found books. So I always like when he comes on. He's a, one of our favorite guests. He'll be on next week. And uh, until then, we'll be right back right after that. Uh, that's all that's it. If we had been prepared, we could have done better. Uh, check out da- Dad Time Out, uh, available wherever you find your podcasts. My nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Remember, the goal of mole control is a dead mole. (laughs) (laughs) The ball is dead. You're running for your life You've a shooting star And all the years No one knows Just how hard you worked But now it's you <laughs> One shining moment You reach for the sky One shining moment You knew One shining When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a my not there for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Sure you don't have a good day. Sizzler. Tinkerbell! We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy! Nice, nice. Goodbye. Gems, coins, and Hilda.